So we're talking about our CS. Uh, first, let me say, okay, how many people in the room have used Git? Yeah, okay, pre pretty much everyone. Have you ever tried to manage your slash etc files using Git? How many people have succeeded in managing slash etc using Git? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> slash, ETC, slash ETC is a classic example of a scenario that can be managed by Git, but is actually more easily managed by older technologies. And RCS takes the older technologies, well, really seriously. Uh, the whole point of RCS, it's not distributed. It's not shared. There's no networking capability. It is the dumbest modern version control system around. That makes it perfect for managing individual files on your local system, one system at a time, where they're not shared, they're unique to every single pet, if you're familiar with the reference. This is not a solution if you run cattle. This is only a solution if you run pets. Um, and I see one person gets the reference. <laughs> so RCS is a great solution for managing changes to a one or a handful of files. It's not the right solution for managing entire directory trees. Git does a way better job of that. It's not the right solution for managing a distributed system. Git or a subversion or anything else does a way better job of that. But if all you're looking to manage is one file on one system, and you don't want to set up a network server, and you don't want to set up a centralized repository, and you don't want to set up all that overhead to manage changes to one flippin' file, RCS is perfect. In the Unix way of things, this is the right tool for the job. Revision control system. This thing dates from, I think, 4.4 BSD, if memory serves. Um, so it's ancient, which means it's available for everything. You can get RCS for Windows if you want. Don't, but you could if you really wanted to. There are really only three, maybe four main commands. You can do almost everything with the RCS command. Just like in Git, where you do everything by typing git space whatever, you can do most functions by typing RCS, some magical command flags, some magical arguments, and magic happens. Usually, you don't even need to use RCS. You can start, you start a brand new repository, quote unquote, by simply checking in the file and it will automatically create the version tracking file for you. Or if you have a directory pre-created called RCS, all caps, it will create the version tracking file in the RCS subdirectory for you. Instantly upon first check-in, poof, you're done, you now have an RCS repository. Uh, So, a very short, simple file in my directory called x. I'm going to check it in. Just like most version control systems, it wants to know what is this file? The test file. There, I'm checked in. That's it. I'm done. I've created my repo. There's only one problem. Yeah, my file's gone. Checking in <clears throat> in the olden days meant I'm done with this file. I don't need it anymore. What I really wanted to do is check it in and leave it unlocked or locked, depending. I'm going to check it back out. Actually, before I check it back out, let's look at the file. All text. So. There's no checksums, there's no really pretty features like you get in Git. This is not, again, different use case. 
and there's not really a lot to these version files. I'm going to check it back out, and it tells me what it did. It basically took the current revision out of the version file, comma v, and restored it to cat. Voila, there it is. Whee, that was fun. Yes, it is. It is now read only. And Gilbert is the spoiler in the crowd because he's <laughs> old enough to have used this the first time around. So there. <laughs> That's okay, so am I. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to remove the version file. Bye bye. So just created a new file. It's not read only anymore. Same contents. And create the directory. And this time when I check it in, I'm going to say dash L. Which means as soon as you check it in, check it right back out in what's called locked, as in locked for further editing. The locked and unlocked is a remnant of multi user development scenarios. If you simply get used to typing ci-l, you won't have any problems. Pretend the command is ci-l, basically. Don't use any of the other options. They're there. They're prickly. They will hurt you. Just do ci-l. So I'll check it back in. And now my file is still there. It's intact. No version file but it's in the subdirectory RCS. So if the directory exists, that's where the version file goes. Done. Now, um, what did I call that thing? So for example, on the mug server, we, oh, look, in the mirror user, I have a directory called RCS. I wonder what that's for. Uh, Mirror.sh. Now, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 So this is a file that shows um, it's a shell script, so of course we've got the shell hash bang line. Then we've got an ID line, dollar I. Thanks. Um, still getting used to my new Mac. So, oh bugger off. So if if I in a brand new file put dollar ID dollar, check in and check out will recognize that as a magical keyword. Well, it's not magical. It recognizes it as a keyword and expands the keyword on check out. Not on check in, but on check out. That's actually kind of important when we talk about the, thank you, Mac OS, when we talk about the dollar log keyword. Dollar log gives us a running log in the top of the file of all the check ins. This is, I mean, this sounds trivial. But this is remarkably handy when, you're got, when you've got a bunch of people managing one shared shell script that does a whole bunch of things. Um, and you can trim it. There's ways to only show you know, the last 10 entries and stuff like that. But usually these files don't have hundreds of changes in the first place, so it's not a problem. And one thing that I do or <clears throat> let me rephrase that, since Robert's going to strangle me if I claim I did this, um, is I typically put a big comment header right at the top of the file explaining to edit this file, type ci-l. When you're finished editing the file, type ci-l. <laughs> so that <clears throat> people new to RCS, new sysadmins joining my team, don't see this file and go, oh, 
check in. Okay, well, I'll do that. CI, file name, and poof, it's gone. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, typically nowadays in the modern era, in 2017 anyway, there's a big ass comment block at the top of the file saying, after making your changes, commit them with CI mirror does SSH. And now I need to submit a pull request to Robert to, uh, <laughs> to, to simplify these instructions, but that's another story altogether. That's actually mine. Oh, is that yours? Yeah, I thought Robert wrote that. No, I put that in for myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a while ago, he's like, how do I change this again? See, why it fixes it? Why it sell documents? I'm just a bitch. Yeah, okay. <laughs> And you'll note the who didn't write the instructions <laughs> in the file. You'll actually see one of the one of the change logs is added added that header. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple versions down. I did. Added I, added I, added yeah. 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 Yep. <laughs> that was almost a year ago now. Mm -hmm. So I started using the, the flag for saying who the user was. It's there. I mean, it's, it's us. It's all there. <laughs> <mirror. laughs> we all yeah. ask you to mirror to edit the file, which. So there's a, a flag to. Uh, I know. We don't care that much. <laughs> and again, it's shared system, shared script. Eh. There's only what, like five people that actually remember how to log into this box in the first yeah. place. So <laughs> it's a pretty limited set of culprits if something goes wrong. Um, and I mean, this is, by the time we get to the end of the file, we're looking at a 782 line long shell script. We needed some kind of revision control on this shell script, but Git, Subversion, CVS, etc., are all kind of overkill. So RCS is just right. And this is a fairly common scenario, at least in my experience, is you've got a system, you've got a file on the system, at work, tnsnames.ora. Hands up how many people shivered when I said that. Oh, only one? Only two? Okay. I know what it is. Yeah, well, it's the, the master config file for Oracle that tells your clients where the server is, or more importantly, where the servers are. So you have to edit it on a regular basis as you bring up and down new Oracle servers, and you have to be able to roll back when you screw up. RCS actually works great for editing tnsnames.ora and rolling it back. Um, going back to Wyatt's comments here, and I'll be shutting up shortly. First check if there's any uncommitted changes, RCS diff. So I'm going to quit, log out of three levels of shell, Delete. Line four. So I've made a change. Sadly, by default, it still reverts to the end format diffs. Just like diff, though, dash u gives me a unified diff, pretty much exactly like you'd expect it to. Telling me, oh, I have uncommitted changes. RCS diff told me that. If I also tried to check it out, it doesn't tell me there's changes, but it tells me, um, you've already checked this out. Are you sure about this? And I can say, yes. Bye-bye changes. And that's exactly, what it, that's exactly what it told me it was about to do. So that's exactly what the result I wanted in this scenario. Let's go back to editing. Um, made a change. And then our log, I believe, is the other command. Our log just tells you all the information about it. <clears throat> what symbolic names there are, what access lists there are, who has locks on the file, where's the, where's the version file, the working file, all that detail, 
There's two versions. I'm going to show you information about two of the two versions. What's the description? And then with a nice separator, oh, there's my log. Bang, 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 bang. So really, the only command you have to know to use RCS is CI-L. Everything else is just icing on the cake. So from a covering your own butt perspective, if you just type CI-L every time you make a change to a critical system file, when the day comes that you realize, oh boy, I've really screwed this up, then you can go read the RCS man pages and figure out how to roll back. And in the meantime, the only command you had to remember was CI-L. So it is super, super cheap insurance, not useful for every possible scenario, but for simple text files, it, it, it fits the bill. Okay. Another nice feature of CI-L is if you haven't made a change since the last check-in, hmm. it's essentially a no-op. Yeah. So it doesn't keep creating new versions. The reason that is nice is you can do a CI-L in the cron tab entry. Yep, and I've actually Why done that. Why would you do that? If you've got a stubborn coworker who refuses to make <laughs> changes, yeah. at least you get some automated check-ins happening so that you can go back to something yep. if the file gets pushed. And actually, I've done that, and the stubborn coworker in that scenario was myself, <laughs> uh, or more accurately, the forgetful coworker in that scenario was myself. Um, yeah, I actually had CI-L running on a, I think it was every 12 hours, and it would automatically go through like this. Actually, I think why it still maintains that script. And if he hasn't run across it yet, awesome. That means it's so low maintenance that it doesn't need to be fixed yet. Um, can't remember what it was for though. It was, it was doing something where I wanted to check in a file that changed fairly regularly, automatically. And I wanted to be able to keep track of the changes so that I could go back and basically prove to someone else in some other department that your file did so change. And uh, yeah, it just works. Like you said, CI-L, it like, doesn't take up any disk space. Oh, and the version file is Delta encoded. So it's not storing an entire copy of the file every time, it's only storing the diffs. The downside is that if you commit, you know, on a modern system, millions of commits, your check-ins will get progressively slower. But I mean, on this puppy, I probably have to have like 10 million check-ins before I even notice the difference. On like a Spark 1, yeah, maybe you'd notice the difference after 10,000 check-ins, I don't know. Question? Uh, it so happens. Uh, we might be the only shop left in the world that is still using CVS. We're making a nope. migration to Git. <coughs> and uh, CVS is essentially set of wrappers around RCS. A little more than that, but it is based on RCS, most yeah. definitely. And in fact, at the back end, it uses uh, these um, uh, minus B files or common yep. B files. And uh, we were using the uh, get CVS import script and a crash on a couple places. And so I went in and checked out the comma B files and I actually had to go through and figure out the format mm -hmm. of the files. And uh, so just if you ever have to look at one of these RCS format files, um, a couple things to keep in mind. One, um, unlike diff or patch, it doesn't have C lines. It has deletes and adds. Uh, the line numbers always refer to the original line in the file at the start of the package dot. So if you say delete 50 lines out of a file and the next line is an add, it would say add at 51 instead of add at whatever the line number would be after the 51 line, 40 some odd lines were deleted. Uh, secondly, there's those at signs that you see in the file. And the at sign if it's at the beginning of a line, 
or on a line by itself, it essentially acts as a open block marker. And it's say similar to an open curly brace in some programming languages. And if the app is on a line by itself or at the end of the line, that acts as a closed block marker. Like, like a closed curly brace. It is documented, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing is it rebuilds the file in reverse. The most recent check in is always at the top. And so if you have 5,000 versions, in order to get version number one, it has to go through the other 4,999 and rebuild it all. That's part of the consequence of having a div and coded file, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but as I was saying, the advantage is that unless you're running on Spark 1, you don't really notice the overhead. Yeah. Or it's actually by design, an earlier version called the SCCS, Source Code Control System, <laughs> did off. forward dips. So it had the original document and then all the changes, right? Well, typically when you're checking out, you want to check out the most current versions, but it has to generate it through all the dips. <laughs> Not only that, but if there's a mistake somewhere along the line, well, I can get to where you want it. And of course, with CCS, it's typically one of the systems of like the AT&T 3D series, which was like, what was that, like six megahertz processor or something? Mm -hmm. So regenerating hundreds of gifts every single time was super painful. RCS design, of course, to solve that problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. so I have a quick question just about the dash L. If you forget it, can't you just rebuild the file from the dash file itself? Uh, yes, or you, but yeah. more likely you just run the CO to get the file back out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Check out as opposed to check in. So it's more a difference of running without dash L and forgetting you can just remember yeah. it. Yeah. Related question. Yeah. Did this in the past work? 